Welcome to our Sunday Eucharist for the St Thomas's community on this fifth Sunday of Easter, which is also the beginning of Christian Aid Week, hence the choice of hymn with which to start this service. We'll have an announcement about the Churches Together Christian Aid service at the end of this Eucharist. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. So we pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. There, let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart. Pause for a moment to reflect upon our sin. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with the living bread. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy. Almighty God, forgive all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness. And keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 Say the glory in excelsis together. Glory to God in the highest. And peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Collect for today, the fifth Sunday of Easter. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, have overcome death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life. Grant that, as by your grace going before us, you put into our minds good desires, so by your continual help we may bring them to good effect. Through Jesus Christ our risen Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. But filled with the Holy Spirit, Stephen gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears. And 
with a loud shout all rushed together against him. Then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their cloaks at the feet of a young man called Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he died. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear now the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you'll know my Father also. From now on you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, Show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you I do not speak on my own. But the Father who dwells in me does his work. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name so the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May the words of my lips, the thoughts of all our hearts, be now and forever acceptable in your sight, for our strength and our redeemer. Amen. I doubt that there's anyone in the country who can be unaware of the government's urging for us to stay at home, save lives and protect the NHS. Though, of course, having said that, they now say they're probably going to change it over the weekend. There we are. Home, we're told, is where we're safe. So, sadly, of course, we have to be aware that not everyone is safe at home. In today's Gospel, Jesus reminds us that in his Father's house there are many dwelling places, and later on that the Father dwells with him. It's not likely that any of us refer to our home as a place where we dwell, unless we were born about 1720. But that's what's implied here. For home is where we belong, where we are safe, where we can rest and relax. And when Jesus says the Father dwells with him, he's referring to that idea of belonging together, that perfect oneness, that perfect relationship between persons, that 
being at home, which we call the Holy Trinity. So Jesus isn't just talking about himself. He's telling his disciples and us that we too have a home with God. Consciously or unconsciously, he's quoting the words of the Psalms. Psalm 23, for instance, I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Or Psalm 84, the sparrow has found, her a, found a house and the swallow a nest where she may lay her young. And at the end of that psalm, blessed are they who dwell in his house. With God, we are at home. We can relax. We are loved. We belong. You might think of the prodigal son, who, when he comes home, despite all that he's done, is welcomed, washed, given a fresh robe, invited to a celebration feast. But the trouble is that Often, that isn't the image of coming home to God that we have. How often do we or other people have mental images of fear, of awe, of judgment? Think of all these stories about people going to St. Peter at the gate and him having a big book and checking how you've done, or Peter or the recording angel. I always remember in Buxton once inquiring about whether a piece of Stilton would be on a cheese stall would be all right for the new year. And the chap assured me it would be fine. Somebody said, oh, you tell him anything. He said, oh, look, I don't want to get there. And said Peter opened his book and said, What about the vicar's bit of Stilton there? <laughs> but I, it's silly. But that's often the impression we have of coming to God. But we don't need to be afraid. We're forgiven. God can't wait to welcome us back to him, back to our true home. Heaven isn't a prize for right behaviour. It's not something that if you pass the test, they let you in. On the other hand, part of coming home is being cleansed and renewed and remade. We can't be at home with God if we're full of anger or greed or hatred or selfishness or any of those qualities which have no place in God's kingdom. We have to allow the Holy Spirit to make us fit for heaven, to change us so we really will be <coughs> at home there. As I said, today is, or this week is, Christian Aid Week. So if you want a thought that links all this to Christian Aid Week, what about this one? Some religious groups offer help to people with strings attached. You can have their aid, their money, their food, but you have to sign up to their form of religion to get it. Some governments offer aid with strings attached as a way to dominate or control. Christian aid is about offering people help to grow and become independent, to become fulfilled, no strings attached. 
unconditional love. That's what makes it Christian aid. Because God loves all of us with no strings attached. Now, we affirm our oneness with Christians around the world, of every tradition, as we affirm our faith. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We, we believe, believe and trust in him. <coughs> Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us, and rose again? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God, and makes Christ known in the world? We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the Church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Now in union with Christ and in the power of the Spirit, let us pray to the Father. As we begin this Christian Aid Week, Father, we pray for all who live in poverty around the world, for those who do not have enough to eat or clean water to drink, all those who do not have access to education or proper health care. We pray for those who have been forced to leave their homes by conflict, natural disaster or economic pressure. We pray for all who suffer under an unjust political, social or economic system. We pray that we may recognise where we contribute to that injustice and have the grace to change our ways. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we mark 75 years since the end of the Second World War in Europe, we pray for the peace of the world. We pray that our leaders and the leaders of all nations may use their power for the common good, working for freedom and justice for all. We pray for understanding and cooperation between nations, for reconciliation where there is or has been conflict. And we ask that your Holy Spirit may inspire Britain to be a force for good in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As nations cooperate to fight coronavirus, we pray that we may also work together to relieve the problems of hunger and death around the world. We pray the poor of the world may not suffer disproportionately from COVID-19, <clears throat> and the scientists and governments of all nations may be willing to pool knowledge and eventually make a vaccine available to all who need it, rich and poor alike. We continue to pray for all doctors, nurses and other health professionals around the world and for all of those working to combat COVID-19. We pray for all who are suffering in this pandemic, the sick, the bereaved, and those whose livelihoods have been damaged or taken away. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. 
we pray for our town of St. Anne and for our witness as the St. Thomas's community in the midst of this town. We pray for all those who live in Shelbourne Road and Lancaster Avenue in their various needs. We pray for our church's pastoral ministry and for the work of the pastoral care team. We pray particularly for your guidance and strength of them as they work in this difficult situation. As we commemorate the 75th anniversary of the E-Day, we remember with thanks all those who gave their lives in the cause of freedom. We pray for those who still know the pain of that loss. We pray for all those for whom our prayers have been asked, especially those on the prayer list of our church. place into your hands all the departed, remembering their families and their friends in their grief. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. The risen Lord came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia, the peace of the risen Lord be always with you. And also with you. Alleluia. response to each offertory of prayer is blessed be God forever. Bless you, Lord God of all creation. Of your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Of your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right. <coughs> thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living Word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit he took flesh. As your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection 
by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for your holy people. And now we give you thanks because in his victory over the grave a new age has dawned. The long reign of sin is ended. A broken world is being renewed and humanity is once again made whole. Therefore with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven we proclaim your great and glorious name forever praising you and saying Holy, 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 holy Lord God of power and might Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. <coughs> Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, we look for his coming in glory. We celebrate this memorial of our redemption as we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. We bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people, and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of Thomas, Julian, and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. We say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. to break this bread, to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us peace. 
Hallelujah, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. body and blood of Christ. I receive this on behalf of all those who are sharing virtually in this Eucharist. Make their, your, as you make your communion spiritually if not physically Let us pray. Eternal God, whose Son Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, grant us to walk in his way, to rejoice in his truth, and to share his risen life, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. God, who through the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ has given us the victory, give you joy and peace in your faith. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and always. Amen. The Christian Aid Week service Will appear, which has been put together by the churches of St. Anne's, will appear on the Facebook page and on our YouTube site from 6 o'clock this evening. And you can either access it then or whenever it's convenient for you during the coming days. We hope it will help you as you mark Christian Aid Week. If you wish to give a donation to Christian Aid, there you can go to a site, CA Week slash, I'm sorry, CA dot week slash uh, just giving. But I shall put that up on the Facebook page so you know. Thank you all very much.